In this tutorial, we're going to introduce you to one of the specialist layout tools for rotary applications where we're going to show you how to use the spiral layout gadget to create a spiral column like you can see here. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go and create a new file. So here we're working with a rotary job type. A job size, so the length of my part I'm going to set to 12 inches, the diameter for my part will be 3 inches. Z0 position, I'm going to set that to the cylinder axis. This is the most appropriate option to use as using the cylinder surface would require you to have a perfect circle. So we're going to go with cylinder axis in this case. XY datum position, we're going to put that to the lower left as that's how mine is set up. And then you need to specify orientation, whether you're working with a linear X axis or a linear Y axis. In this case, I'm working along the X axis where I'm going to look at wrapping the Y values. And we could go ahead and press OK. So we're going to look at how we can use a gadget that will automatically create a series of vectors for a spiral layout. So this really only applies to Pro and Aspire users. So let's go to Gadgets, Wrapping, and here we have a spiral layout. So if we click on that, that's going to open up the spiral layout gadget. So this gadget will create vectors for toolpathing as if they are spiralling down the column. For example, I could look at cutting a barley twist uh, with a pointed tool. So some of the things that you need to set in here. So your spiral parameters. So this is the number of strands that you want in place. So here I'm just going to go with four. Then we could look at using a spiral pitch or spacing. So in this case, I'm going to apply a spacing between the strands. I'm going to apply one inch spacing between each one of those strands. Then we could look at the twist direction. So we could create a right hand twist or we could look at creating a left hand twist. So in this case, I'm going to select the left hand twist there. You could apply coves at the start and at the end here and then we have a little reminder of our cylinder dimensions and here I'm happy with the settings I've got there so I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. So we see we have a message here. So this is the software telling us how many revolutions that it will require to do this spiral based on the settings that we entered in the gadget form. And if I go ahead and press OK, you can see that the software has created a set of vectors. So if I use this option here to zoom to the drawing limits, we can see we've got these four vectors uh, positioned here. So we can see that our vectors are actually coming out of our job space and this is because of the way that it's going to be cut because the top edge is in effect going to be joining up to the bottom edge. You'll notice that the vectors we've got are grey. If we go to our layer tab when we use that gadget it auto creates two extra layers for us. We have a spiral vectors layer and we have a cove vectors layer. Both of the colours for these layers are grey and the spiral vectors are these vectors here um, and then the cove vectors we don't currently have anything on that layer because we didn't choose to apply coves to our spiral layout. That's why that is blank. Now using this gadget helps me position these vectors accurately where the software does this for us automatically. Now I could do this manually if I knew exactly how to create and work out all of the values but this really is a quicker way for me to do this. So let's see how these vectors where they're laid out here will create a spiral uh, wrapped part for us when we come to toolpath those vectors. So let's take those vectors that we're going to switch over to the toolpath tab. First thing we must do is check over our material setup. So this is basically just going over what we already set up in our job setup form uh, just to make sure this is all the accurate information we're going to take with us to our machine and ultimately match this to that of our machine setup. 
So here we've got a diameter of 3 inches. XY datum is set to the lower left hand corner. Z0, we are setting that at the centre of our cylinder. Model position in material, this section doesn't apply to us as we are not working with any 3D entities. And you want to check over your rapid Z gaps above the material and Z gap above your material to ensure that everything is safe and appropriate. So we're going to go ahead and press OK here. And then with these vectors, we're going to go into a profile toolpath. So the start depth for this, I'm going to set that at zero. Cut depth is going to be 0.2 of an inch. The tool that I plan to use is a half inch ball nose. Check over your settings, ensuring that's safe and appropriate for your machine uh, and the material you're using. Machine the vectors, we're going to machine on those vectors. We don't want to do that on the inside or the outside. We want to make sure that, that is on the vector. And then we could give that a name. So we'll just call this one Profile Spiral. And then simply go ahead and press Calculate. So if I just tile my windows horizontally, what's actually happening here is that the tool will enter uh, into our part and it's basically just going to follow along the vector and uh, it's the actual cylinder that will turn in order for us to create these spirals. Right and so if we go ahead and maximize the 3D view and then preview that toolpath you would have noticed for a split second there that the software unwrapped our part as it was calculating the toolpath. So you would have seen that. Um, and it did that whilst it was calculating that preview. Once it finished calculating that, it just put that back into a wrapped view uh, as if we were previewing this um, to see what it looks like on our machine. So the software still thinks of this as a flat three axis toolpath and it will be the compatible post processor that will exchange the Y values for the rotary axis moves. So um, at this stage, I really like what we've got there. Uh, so now we could think about saving our toolpath. So let's go to close and then we're going to go over to save toolpath and we can see that it's picked up the profile spiral toolpath and that's the one that I want to save and so what we'd do here is we'd select a post processor now your post processor has to support rotary moves as this is the stage where the software is going to take the three axis calculated toolpaths and then convert them into rotary now the post processor has to support rotary and needs to be set up so that it's configured correctly for what your rotary axis is now in my example I'm using a Mac 3 control program so I've got Mac 2 3 selected here and I'm wrapping the Y value so I have the option here to wrap Y to A and if I go up there's also the two options to wrap X to A a being the typical designated G code for a rotary move. So in my case, I want to use this option wrap Y to A, and then I could simply go ahead and press save. So here we could give that a name and then simply go ahead and press save and we can close out there and then take that toolpath file over to our CNC machine to cut that out. Let's just tile the window. And it's important to note that you're not restricted to only using gadgets to create your vectors for rotary machining. You can create your own vector geometry and toolpaths using any of the available tools that we have in the software. So at this stage, let's go ahead and save that file. So go to File, Save As, and then in the Project folder, will have a file there called creating a spiral column for you to access and that completes this tutorial.